Hey guys, welcome to our daily encounter. In Daniel chapter 3, in our reading today, we read about this golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had constructed. And he had told the people that whenever the music played, they were all to bow down to this golden image that he had created, this golden statue. However, there were three men, Jewish men, who were not uh, willing to bow down to this image. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, better known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these guys had refused to bow down to this image that King Hezekiah had constructed. So King Hezekiah had them thrown into the fiery furnace. And they go into this furnace and uh, it was very, very hot. So much so that the people who were commanded to throw them into the fire uh, died just by being in close proximity to this fire. But uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as they were in the fire, were not scorched by the fire. Uh, as a matter of fact, King Nebuchadnezzar looked in the fire and he noticed that there was a fourth individual there with them uh, and realized that it must have been some type of angel or something like that. And so he had them released from the fiery furnace only to find that, yeah, their hair had not been singed, that their clothes didn't smell like fire, uh, but they were completely intact. And so King Hezekiah come to realize that the God of the Jews, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was a legitimate God and that no one was to speak against this God that they served. And so this is a great uh, lesson in the fact that uh, even in the fire, in the depths of the fire, God protected these three men as they refused to bow down to the image, to the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had constructed. And so it becomes a great testimony and a great story about overcoming the temptation to bow down to a statue or to worship another God, but to stay faithful to Yahweh and that Yahweh would protect them. As we get into 1 Peter chapter 4 in our reading today, we see yet another imagery of fire. As we read in verse 12, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. So in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12, here he talks about a fiery trial. Once again, uh, talking about uh, those whom he was speaking to who would in a sense, be in a fiery trial, uh, maybe not literally as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but in the sense that they were being persecuted, they were being tested, they were being tried, like like a, a metal being tested in the flame. So their faith was being tested. He said, don't be surprised by that. Don't, don't feel like uh, there's something weird going on when you're being tested. He said, uh, this is something that's going to, to happen. He says, uh, your connection to Christ should help you realize that in verse 13. But to the degree that you are suffer that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exaltation. So you're just suffering the way, same way that Christ was suffering. Jesus himself said that, you know, a servant is not greater than his master. If they treated the master in a cruel way, so will they treat his servants. And that's definitely true with us. Uh, how could we expect to get away with not going through certain fiery trials and persecutions and things like that when Jesus Christ himself went through those things? Our king, uh, the one who we follow, went through trials and testings and sufferings. And uh, so we should not feel ourselves exempt from doing it. So we shouldn't be surprised when we encounter those things. He goes on to say in verse 15, make sure that none of you um, or actually before that, he says in verse 14, he says, uh, if you are revolved for the name of Christ, uh, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. So this is uh, very similar also to what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had experienced, where there was this fourth individual that was helping them through the fiery trial to help them from being scorched, from being burned, from being consumed by the fire. Here, when we enter into fiery trials, when we are persecuted, when we are tested, when our faith is tested by these fiery trials, 
we have a, another individual there as well. Someone else that is in the fire with us. And here it's described in verse 14 of second, I'm sorry, first Peter chapter four, as the spirit of glory and of God. He says that uh, the spirit of God or the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. That is, uh, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, works in us in a very special way whenever we undergo fiery trials. And He's there to help us, to comfort us, to, to keep us, and to guard us, and and to uh, help us make it through the fiery trial. And so we, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, have another individual, a divine individual, who is there with us in the midst of the fire to help us and to pull us through. And that's something that we have to remember. But all the while, we need to remember to keep our conduct in, in check. It says in verse 15, Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer, or thief, or evildoer, or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God in this name. And that's what Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were able to do. They glorified God uh, by uh, overcoming the temptation to bow down to the statue, uh, by... Uh, showing the power of God in their fiery trial and coming out on the other side. And that brought glory to God. And that's what we should do as well. And so as we read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we can see that this really ties to us as Christians, as we too might suffer uh, the fiery trials that might try to overtake us. And so we are to... Uh, Trust our, and trust ourselves to the Lord to realize that these trials that we undergo are not peculiar. Uh, people have been doing, have been undergoing trials for centuries before us. And also the very fact that Jesus himself suffered means that we too will suffer oftentimes for our, our faith. But then also to realize that we have another individual with us, a divine individual as it were, uh, the spirit of glory and of God rest upon us in the times of trials and that we should uh, take that as comfort and as strength to get through the fiery trial but at the same time not to get involved in in misconduct that might even cause the fiery trial to get worse uh, but would also take away glory from God but we are to entrust ourselves to him as Christ entrusts himself to God and when we do so it brings much glory to God. And so we can see this whole process working to the glory of God, just as it uh, happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that should be our ultimate goal. So these are some things we can reflect on and think about when we find ourselves uh, in the fiery trial, when we too find ourselves in situations where we are called to bow down to the image. Uh, and oftentimes for us, it's it's a call to bow down to the, uh, the ideologies and that and the worldview of the people around us, which sometimes um, is contrary to the Christian worldview. But we must entrust ourselves to God, realize that God is with us in the fiery trial, and trust Him, uh, continue to live a holy and righteous life before Him, and the outcome will be glory going to Him, which is what should be our ultimate desire. So, these are some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.